presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Mike in Southern California. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Tom, nice to talk to you again. And I have to start out and first tell you, I love this trading room. This thing is great. This app, it works great. And uh, getting all the information, it, you're like instantly there. No delay, nothing. That's I know. Great. I Listen, Thank I you appreciate again. your growling problem with us. Your channel is in my pocket all day long. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, man. You Thank you. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week, we go seven hours a day, we go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's making a great week, folks. To begin a great relationship, know what you want. Know what the needs of your body are, what the needs of your mind are, what fits well with you. There are millions of men and women on, and some of them will make a great match for you, and others won't. The two of you only need to be a key and a lock, a match that works. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 279, NASDAQ down 8, S&P is up 20. Gold, gold contract down $26.10, traded at 1970 an ounce. Silver down $0.16, cents, $23.17 an ounce. Light Sweet Crude up $3.66 at $72.95 a barrel. Notes and bonds. A 10-year note down a full point, plus three ticks at 115 flat. The 30-year off almost two points, one point plus 31 ticks, 32 ticks equals one point at 130.12 and King Dollar. King Dollar right now trading down 269 at 102.847. The Euro is at 107. The Yen is out here at a price point of 131 and the British pound is at 122 to one US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call folks. I know what's going on in your world and the world of the S&Ps. Let's take a look at it. What do you have? Well, if we take a look at the E-mini first, I suspect when I just did that update that we're going to be game somewhere around this 2033, not 2000, 4033. Right now you're up uh, 19 ticks, 19 points rather. Um, and what's happening now, this is cool. This is So watch how this shakes out, folks. OK, you see this bar right here? Uh, the bar that we're tied, the 10-minute bar that we're on right now. Let me look at this thing here. Okay, so it's 309. And this 10-minute bar, what happened here, folks, is we got to 20, 40, 27. But yet we're at 40, 20 right now. But see the volume? See how the volume exploded to the, uh, to the higher? When, they, when you see something like that, that is saying that it still wants higher price. This is a, this, it, it's a tricky one. But the bottom line is that that's telling me that it does want to get up into the bar where we started off from, which is the 4,033 this morning. So we'll see how that baby shakes out. We go into the, that's in the short term. If we take a look at the SPY, bottom line, you get a sideways move, you get a sideways move out here with light volume. Let's pull this baby up. Yeah, it, well, actually, you're going to be higher with light volume. And I suspect, you know, the next couple of days, you're going to bounce around. We'll probably go test this, this, the, the spike that we had out there. Uh, on last Wednesday, that was the 402, also with light volume. This will mess around here for a bit after the way that, you know, bottom line, you had, you had the couple banking deals and, you know, the market didn't, didn't go down a lot. That's real, did, well, actually, it didn't go down at all. Um, I think we finished up last week. Yeah, we did. We finished up last week. That's how deviant it is right now because that has to do with where we came from going all the way back to January. That's, that's the reality. We're going to take a look at the uh, NQs. We bring up the NQs. We take a look at the NQs here. What do we have inside the NQs? Okay, so these babies here, same type of setup. See that volume expansion? That volume expansion. Okay, we're going against 1,500, oh, 150, one second. 15,000. We just did 12, 13,000 right there. This, this one's higher price too. This one's high. This be, we'll see where this sh shakes out. And the Qs, once we got 848, 
Yeah, we're not in, we're not inside. The, the, the NQs have to get inside the 12,848. That's the number because the NQs are set up differently than the S&P. You get inside 12,848, then it would have game up to the 12,952. Gold. We look at the gold contract out here. Bottom line inside the gold contract. You get 1935 that's wide open to get hit once again. You know, it's so interesting, man, that, you know, it, 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 my take is that we are going to 2,500 right now. Now, what does right now mean? This is where this gets interesting, right? It's like, okay, is right now like two or three months from now or two or three weeks or two or three days, right? I'd say we're in the two or three month deal. You know, you can see how they're, they're trying to hold this baby down. They, there's just, there's some traders of both, both sides of the market. That's the bottom line. As it keeps pushing over this um, 1983, it is getting sold, can't hold price at that level. That sets up right there at 1935, coming back down again. Now, most of the time, yeah, 1935 is the top of that. 1892 is the bottom. And if I'm right in that context, folks, what will end up happening, it will be fast and furious, because that's what gold loves to do. Fast, furious, just take yourself. Now, let's talk about the bond market, because it looks to me like bonds have bottomed. And I suspect that that is it, that the rates have peaked. If we take a look at this, what you're gonna see, you're backing down today, okay? We're backing down with 1.1 million contracts. Well, when you take a look at this, man, I mean, we went higher in a dramatic way. And, you know, both times we backed down. Back, we backed down a little last week, went topside again, had pretty good volume at the high, but that was 100% move for move. Now, you're just backing down slightly. And, you know, the, the Fed has a deal. There's no two ways about it. The deal is employment, price stability, right? Well, guess what, folks? This is going to be, it's not going to be unique, but what's going to, what has already happened is this. They had to push so hard and so fast that they, they blew up the banking system. And it's blown up, man. It's just like uh, one of the tigers in the den, uh, Duffy was saying uh, earlier, that, yeah, this is a, you know, the banks have assets, but they're allowing the banks to, um, say those assets are worth more money than they are, okay? So picture, this is what you have. The, if the Fed keeps going up on rates, right, that's more of an implosion. So they're looking at it, okay, am I gonna implode the rates or do I have to stop the rates? And the fact of the matter is, um, bottom line, inflation's gonna go more. But it gets heavier than that. The bottom line is that they're gonna burn the public versus burning the banks, because you can't burn the banks, well, not the burning of the banks, but the bottom line is that the banks would burn, and if the, all the banks burn, then everything burns. So my take on this, and I'll, I'll bring up the, the chart when we come back from the break. Um, you know, the bond market, technically, it looks to me like it's going higher. We already have three higher highs, two higher lows. And so I think that's the way it's going to go. And then, you know, bottom line, if you haven't got the gold report, Go check it out because that means hard assets are going, man, big time. Because they, if they're going to make that choice, <laughs> guess what? Prices are still going to go up because every time that they do raise rates, the losses of the banks get incredibly more. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. 
A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials are up 280. The Nasdaq's down 6. S&P's are up 19 and a half. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rose, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve does an outstanding show here every trading day, 11, 10, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You'll see it right on the right-hand side. You can get Mastering probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is the savings of $199 or 22%. And you get it for one full year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, when you get that, you're going to get a lot more than a newsletter. You're going to get a newsletter. You're going to get all the graphs and charts that send out, Steve sends out every single morning. And you're going to get a bunch of archives so you can understand how Steve looks at the market and trades this market each and every trading day. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? The madness of March is what's going on. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> who, who could? I, I wonder what the odds are or were of San Diego State, FAU, University of Miami, UConn getting through. That was kind of that's kind of normal. But for those other three schools to make it into the Final Four, the odds have got to be just. You know, and you know, you know where this gets interesting too, folks. And Steve, this is where this whole pay deal. Where yes. you know has has it on, and guess what, folks? This is why Florida is booming. Also, if you saw there's two schools in Florida, okay, out of the four, uh, yeah. the bottom line is that people down here, the alumni down here, are out of their mind, meaning in a great way. Okay, so um, absolutely, and, and, and the FAU alumni, the, the, really, you know, for for kind of one of Florida's smaller, large schools out there. I mean, well, they're big time into it. That's right. And, and, you know, you and I know this, but folks, a small college in Florida is a monster school. <laughs> yeah, 40,000 people, right? A small, small college is 30, 40,000 students. Exactly. Right? Yes. Right. You know, when I, when I first saw it and then, you know, I, I got to catch that uh, Charles Barkley uh, interview last night. And, okay. Okay. Um, you know, it, you know, he says it like it is. He's, he can't stand yes. it. You know, I'm not, I don't agree with him. I think they should get paid. But the bottom line is that, you know, he said, hey, listen, man, it, it's very evident. He says, that's it. He says, they can move that quick. And he says, and people weren't expecting, you know, what they what they got so fast. And oh, it's, no it's, go, it's wild, though, isn't it, man? Yeah. And, and the beautiful thing is I get to go down the street now. I'm going to go watch the uh, FAU team play that's you know, next season. I know. 
uh, how you cool know, is that? You just go catch a game. Yeah, right. Right, right down there. So uh, it. yeah, it's gonna be gonna be interesting uh, 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 coming up uh, this next weekend and and then the final game. Oh yeah. So I, I thought we would do today, Tom. I know you were talking about gold earlier. I just caught just a very little bit of it. Yes. What I thought we would do is is just uh, start with a blank monthly chart for gold for folks and maybe kind of walk them through some of the tools um, that I that I share and that we utilize nice. that I utilize to help understand the market. So let's start decorating this monthly chart. And the first decoration or one of the first patterns that I have applied here is the monthly horizontal trading ranges. Now, this is a tool that was uh, talked to us by Bud Rolfs. Again, uh, Tom, thank you for bringing you know, Bud to us. And what he did, or what I'm doing here on this chart, is we are looking for the, the, for the, for the data that I've got. So this takes me back to 2002. So we get back from 2002 to where we're at today. Yeah. What this tool does is this identifies the largest number of co-located opens or closes. In other words, it doesn't matter whether it's an open or a close, but it needs to be either an open or a close of a, a candle. And what it does, it seeks out the largest quantity, the largest number. The largest number is 21 closes, and that exists near the $1,318 level. The next largest number is at 1181. It's not exactly 1181, but it's very close to it. Okay. There's 14 closes there. What that does, Tom, is that sets up a 137 point range. And once we have that, all the different sequences that we see here, these lines are all 137 points apart from each other. Right. Here's what we know. What we know is the 2004 level is a significant resistance area. That's where price got up to uh, this month. I, uh, I Again, I, th I think you were talking about price getting back up to that area, 2005, maybe, something like that. But this is a key resistance level that if price can close above on a monthly time frame, the month is not over, obviously, um, that would be a bullish outcome. Otherwise, that's a key level of resistance. That's the horizontal trading range. Yes. A second set of patterns that we can put up here, um, and this ties into your thought process about maybe a pullback and then we move higher out here. The second set of patterns is these TAS market profiles. Now, we're looking at the same monthly chart, just decorated with a different tool. And what we can see here is that price is trading above resistance. That's at 1849. So gold, certainly on a monthly basis, I have to say, when you trade above resistance is bullish. So that's the monthly time frame. That's what this uh, tool shows us. Another uh, thing we can take a look at are just simple trend lines that people can draw on there. I've got one at the top, one at the uh, bottom. Another set of lines that we can identify is uh, price channels. So here I've drawn in a longer term uh, price channel. Again, we're still looking at the same chart, monthly chart here for gold. Look at that, once huh? price, yeah. yeah, once price breaks out of a price channel, just like we did the horizontal ones, Tom, once price breaks out of a rising or descending price channel, we can add same distance. So we're doing the exact same thing as we did horizontally as we would diagonally is we just add that uh, that that value that distance and here i've drawn that in and we can see that uh, price still is above those channel lines so if i draw the exact same distance again whoops look at where price stopped when we got up to the highs in 2011 look at that. yep again just using the the trend line so we know that these are another important tool to help us understand what the market is doing we're looking at the bigger picture here this iteration shows a rising price channel with inside a larger set of price channels up there so those are the green diagonal lines now what's not shown here very clearly uh, it's kind of faint is that the actual high that we saw this month stopped right at that mid line of this little green rising price channel. So again, resistance, resistance, resistance um, with regard to these channel lines that we're taking a look at. This is the fully decorated chart. And so on the fully decorated chart, we get back to the 2004 area. That's resistance, both the horizontal and the diagonal uh, um, uh, price channel resistance. And from a support standpoint, I would come back to about the 1729 area. That's the horizontal trading range boundary line that's below where we're at right now, above, you know, below the 1860 level, and is the center of a profile and runs right into another rising price channel. So on that pullback that you're anticipating, 1729 would be an area that I would be watching. It's not that price can't get below that, but that would most certainly be a very logical area for all of us to watch. Now, last week, and I think you did mention, maybe it was Larry, but the last week marked four consecutive higher weekly gold closes. What I have on this chart, so this tool, Tom, looks at consecutive higher closes or consecutive lower closes. 
beyond just one close. And what you can see out here up at the highs, look at how often we see four consecutive weekly moves. They're not all four consecutive weekly moves, but once we get to that fourth consecutive weekly move, we typically see a move lower. So this supports your idea of uh, gold pulling back, and we should pull back for two to four weeks. Now, I don't recall, you might have been talking months, I don't know, Tom, but I, you know, I'm just on the weekly charts, only have the weekly to take a look sure, at no, here. No, yeah, yeah. You know, but a pullback for two to four weeks absolutely makes sense. It would just follow just the normal pattern that we have out here. But if gold is going to move lower, it needs to close below this daily number here. So this is what people can track. Watch 1947 or thereabouts. That's my oscillator and change line. Gold needs to close below that on a daily time frame to really support this idea of a uh, further pullback. So that's utilizing trend lines, channel lines, um, and again, all that stuff is taught with inside the Mastering Probability newsletter. Great job, Steve, great job. Thank and listen, Thank folks, it's, you know, you just saw what we, you know, Steve went through. It's clear, like, really clear. I think so. Get get, it is, it is, <laughs> man. Get over to our website at TFNN. You're gonna see newsletters. You're gonna see Steve's newsletter right on the right-hand side, Mastering Probability, hit that button. Folks, the bottom line, 29 days, it's free. You want to have it to 30 days? Okay, no problem also. Have a great one, Steve. Have a safe one. Look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Thank Take you. you Stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. We have the Dow. Dow's up. My gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial is uh, trading up at 288. NASDAQ is down 10. SP is up 20. Let's get into the oil market and see what's happening out here with the oil. So. <clears throat> Oil caught the bid. Okay, so you got 316,000 contracts. Oh, I see. Now it's going to go up to ice. Uh, interesting. Okay. Okay, so you had oil breakdown. 
and you're coming, well, ice is really, ice is laying out at 73.43. Let me put this on a continuous contract and see how we lay out. Okay, pull this back. I'm gonna put this on a 15 year monthly. See how this thing shakes out. Okay, well, this is the place. If you're gonna get a rejection, this is the place to do it. This is the place to do it. You can see what we did here. You know, we got down, we got down into $64.12. Your swing point was 62.43 going back into uh, December of 2021. Yeah, this would be the way to do it, man. So we'll see where this can shake out. This is, this is, yeah. Let me pull up the XLE for a second and see how we're shaking out there. Pull this back. I'm gonna do the same exercise on this one. Yeah, see, this gets interesting because when you do the same exercise on this, now, now what has happened, the XLE has pulled back with volume, but when you're actually talking about, it's an expanded volume from the last four months. But what it is, is that we had so much volume going back um, of June of 2022, that it's actually not bad, it's light volume. That's, that's what it comes down to. Because in June of 2022, we got to a low of 69, we only got a, to a low here of 75. So as I said many times, Oil loves to consolidate, so this bottom line, it could be very game on once again here. And what this is going to be all about, folks, this is going to be all about how I started the program off. My take is that this is, this is you know, I was always trying to figure out, right? So, so picture, I, you know, I've had the gold report now, which 21 years, I think. No, no, it's 2023, so I've had it longer than that. 23 years, whatever it is. Um, you know, and... At the beginning, it seemed like 2,000 was a lot, but people were putting 5,000 out there, putting 2,500 out there, and that, that seemed like a lot too, okay? Now, compared to where we are right now, you know, you, you get to learn a lot in, in 20 years trading the same thing. There's no doubt about that. And the essence of it, it's, it's kind of just like how gold's trading right now. You know, it, it wants to break, but it's still, there's not enough there to break, okay? And so it's like, okay, what's going to make that market break? Well, and these things come from nowhere, right? This is, I mean, who would think that you could have a banking crisis and the, and the banking crisis has to do with the aspect that it's not a um, situation, well, thus far, it's not a situation that they're talking about a residential mortgages I believe we are going to come up to commercial mortgages. That's going to be an additional problem for the regionals. Um, not here. It's not here yet, but it'll it'll get there. Um, what has happened thus far, and I'm sure it's on plenty of other banks' balance sheets, is flat out. You know, a note and bond and municipal bonds. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, problem. So when you look at that, it's like okay. That to me, and, and here, well, here, let me show you this, this chart, because when you look at the 10-year, this is a beautiful setup, man. I mean, this, particularly because, let's take a look at this. Okay, what you see first, you can see that we came off that low with volume, okay? Big volume. We come off the low, 3.7 million contracts, 4.2 million contracts, 3.7 million, right? Now, watch me to take a look at this and we put this on a continuous contract. This is a pretty chart. We pull this back. That is a pretty chart, folks. You get one, two, you have three higher highs, you have two higher lows. Guess what? That's an uptrend. That's the bottom line. Particularly, we came back with light volume. This is an uptrend. Now watch. Then I'm going to take this. I'm going to put this on a. I got to put it on longer than that. I got to put it on a 30 year. Uh, 
you put it on a 30 year, and what you're gonna see is that we just came back to where we came off the lows in 2007. So, my take here, man, bond market, you're going up on price and you're going down on yield. And you will see where it shakes out, but that, that's a good looking chart. And that, that is an uptrend, okay? Just definition wise, that's an uptrend. And we've been there from some, some quite some time. So this is gonna get really intriguing watching this whole thing shake out Be, because of the fact, you know, I couldn't understand like four or five months ago why people kept, and you're talking about big traders, why they thought that the aspect that they could um, have such a hard opinion that, because the market did, the market had a high opinion, you know, that the, the, the bond market would top out at five, five and a quarter, okay? And it did. That's, that, it did thus far, let's put it this way. So, we'll see where it goes, because you can, it, fundamentally you can see the, the writings on the wall. Fundamentally, if we were all banks, picture we were all banks, and you know that you had it on the paper, okay? Well, every, every single quarter point, you just lose so much more money, billions, not millions, billions, okay? They're not gonna let that happen, because then everything is down the tubes. Because, see, we happen to be in the, in the market every day, so we understand that, you know, inside of our accounts, if the, if the stock price, I'm just gonna use $100, okay, because bonds are traded at $100 price points. So if we have a, you know, some security that's $100, right? And we know it's trading at $80, but the way it's worked right now is that the, the bank is saying it's worth $100, right? Well, we know we can't do that. So that's us, though, that are in the market. The, the public, and doesn't realize that. What we're going to see is that there's gonna be more stories about how this is set up and there'll be more people that will get educated at the point of like, I can't believe that this is happening, okay? Yeah, so then my take is that, yeah, you might get another quarter point rate hike, but guess what? It's, it's, going, it's going to be going the other way because the, the, the crisis is not over. Um, that's my take. And What's not over for sure <laughs> is the market going down. Because what, 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 what we'll get to see, I suspect, is that, that on the S&P, this large ABC structure down is still in place. But this is what's gonna take commodities to the moon. And, the, and then the Fed's next deal will be, we just have to wait longer. Because we can't do this at once, because, and they can't. Because that's breaking, and that's a bigger portion than breaking than burning the public. You get the gist of it? Think, think about it. Who got, who, got, who got burnt in the banking crisis in 2007? I suspect if we go all the way back to any crisis, who got burnt? Not the banks. Doesn't happen that way, folks. Dow Industrials are up 241. Nasdaq's down 35. S&Ps are up 13. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials uh, up 253, Nasdaq's down 26, S&Ps are up uh, 16 and a half. Let's take a look at the Dow Industrials and take a look inside the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow. Point-wise, mm, IBM's picking its head up, I guess. You got uh, IBM putting 31 positive points. Goldman's uh, the top dog out there today. 41 pos positive points. United Health 38. Uh, J.P. Morgan 27. Taken away from it. Microsoft uh, minus 23. That's been on fire. Nike down uh, 16. Well, 16 negative points. Apple uh, 10. We go inside the NDX 100. We take a look at the NDX 100. The strength versus the weakness inside the NDX. You got Walgreens boots. Oh, no, Warner Brothers. Oh, Warner Brothers. That's, uh, that's up big, up 3%. You get uh, Diamond, uh, Diamondback Energy up 3%. Constitutional Brands, that's up 2.3%. Taken away from it. Pindu is down 3%. Google's off 24 And you got Microchip Technology, which is off uh, one7 Let's go over to Amazon, see what's happening with Amazon here. Yeah. Okay, so Amazon's just laying there. Yeah, it's pulling back slight, long, slight light volume, that's for sure. We go look at Google. Google's pulling back with light volume. So the cool thing about like Google pulling back with light volume right now is this, folks, okay? So the, the market itself had strength, you know, in uh, the 15th and 16th coming up. So if you, if you get this pullback and it gets into that area and has light volume and rejects price, that's saying, hey, well, it wants to go higher. If we see the expansion of volume, then you get a whole different ball game happening, meaning it, it still wants much lower price. We go to Microsoft, we, we take a look at Microsoft. Yeah, this is a joke on Microsoft. I mean, Microsoft's down 360, but guess what? This, 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 the, the volume's so light, it's amazing. Microsoft has a lot of stuff happening for it, man. This, this is just, this is, this is typical, not that Bill Gates is not even there anymore, but this is typical Bill Gates deal, meaning someone else has something, they just keep going, 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 Microsoft catches up, then they take them over, and then they eat everyone alive. Um, you know, it's amazing. Looking at Microsoft's numbers, if you're watching Tiger TV, five years ago, Microsoft was taking in 30 billion every 90 days. Well, it's taken in 51 billion every 90 days now. It was bringing a dollar 14 to the bottom line five years ago. Now it's bringing 224 to the bottom line. And on top of that, guess what? It's still growing. It's it's growing in the United States by five and point five point three percent. It's growing internationally. The same deal. Their cloud service, uh, however, is growing by uh, seven percent. You know, so it's pretty amazing. You know. These large companies, well, no, Microsoft in general, can grow at a, a point like that with large numbers. 
It's just amazing, actually. It really is. Let's go take a look at the, uh, let's go to the GDX. Take a look at the GDX inside the uh, gold market. Take a look at this GDX. You're going to see, so last time we had volume in the GDX was $31 and two pennies. That was last, uh, the se that was the 17th of March. Makes sense, right? You know, pot of gold, Irish, right? <laughs> then what we did is this, you got, you, got, you, you, you back down with light volume. No, we back down with volume. Okay, so pitch it. You had volume of 63 million. You got over that with 30, with 28. You came back down with 35. Then you went back up with 27. This is the setup, and, and, and see, you're coming into 39 million, and the fill in the gap is 32.94. So this here also, I expect the same thing. We get a couple gaps under, underneath it, and I suspect we're gonna get them filled. If we do the uh, SLV, Let's, now, the SLV is just straight out ETF for the silver market because silver is stronger than gold now. This, is, this, is, this always gets interesting how this jumps around. We get, and you can see you're, you're at that gap. The, the gap in the SLV is 21.54. We hit 21.25 today. Same setup, though, except the difference is with silver. See how silver contracted so dramatically from the $20.43? That's a problem. And... Few folks who have traded inside the silver market and the gold market for some time, uh, when we get pullbacks there, they get nasty, man. And you know, I'm not expecting something that that's nasty because you know we are, we already this has been going on for a couple months. You know, we had a good run, we pulled back. It was a decent pullback, and that's how it should have pulled back. We're up here again. Now the real question is how is this going to pull back? I know if I'm correct in the assessment of how it's going to pull back, because see the lot that's the, that's the small one, the larger picture where all these assets are going. This is my take on it: is the aspect that they they are not going to be able to keep raising the rates. And the market itself is already bringing the rates down. So if we here, let me let me pull this up for you, and you'll watch this. I'll do the curve on the rates. So when you're looking at this graph here. This, this, is, this is the curve, okay? You see 2, 3, 5, 7, 10, 15, 30, right? This is the, you know, at the 2, we're at 3.9 right now. I just hit 4, okay? The 3-year, 3.7, 5, 3.5, 3 3.5, 10, 3.5, 30, 3.7. Well, when, when the market is saying that we are going to have problems and you can't raise the rates, and they're gonna to have to push money into the marketplace, that's what this is also saying. Because they will pay you right now 4% for two years, and yet with five years, only get 3.6. Okay, that doesn't even make any sense, you know, in the aspect of how we'd normally look at markets, right? You know, as you go forward, you know, rates would be higher, right? Well, that's, that's not how this is set up right now. And it hasn't been set up like that for a while. You know, so I suspect and it's gonna, this is going to be, this is all about the banking crisis. That's all, it's a, well, it's not, yeah, that's all it's about, really. It's, that's how it sets up, you know. And I suspect what we had is that they had to go up a half a point. You know, Lagarde over in Europe had to go up, uh, well, we had to go up a quarter point. She had to go up a half a point because somehow they have to keep this, you know, you know, you, you see the, the Fed folks, every couple days they send someone out the banking system is secure well what else are you going to say oh you're, they're going to go out well, yeah I, like if you didn't see this yet the head of the saudi bank who crashed there's no doubt that he crashed uh, credit Suisse, and he was the biggest uh, investor in it when he says no we're absolutely not putting any more money in it well he's fired okay because he he it, it's amazing to me actually that he basically crashed the, the equity with his statement, and there was no reason to make a statement. But guess what? He made a mistake. And we're in a time frame right now, if mistakes are made, the acceleration is so much faster than, than all of us realize. That, that's how it comes down. Dow, Dow Industrials right now up at 197. You get the NASDAQ down 45. S&Ps are up uh, 8. Gold is down 25, and you get silver off 11 cents.
Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up at 233. We hit the NASDAQ uh, down 34. S&P is up 13 and a half. Uh, you know, what we don't have these days, folks, is that you don't have... Uh, you know, lines coming across the news that people are hiring, okay? We know that the unemployment rate, though, is staying low. The jobs are staying high. The larger companies, however, we just keep hearing one after the other. Now, the, this one here, Disney. Disney is saying, you know, bottom line, they're laying off, I think, 7,000. Yeah, 7,000. Now, 7,000 is not a lot. They have 220,000 people, okay? The point is, though, just like, because, you know, we look at charts, we're traders, it's the trend. The trend, the bottom line, is that more folks are getting laid off than hired in larger companies. And those larger numbers, even though they're small numbers for the size of the workforce in larger companies, but they are large numbers. That's the bottom line, okay? You know, you start, anyway, you get the gist of it, okay? Um, it's happening out there. And as they, as we all say, uh, you know, 
that might be a small number, but if you wear one of those numbers, then that's a depression for you. So it's this, this whole deal is here, meaning that the aspect of, I suspect you're gonna have companies that are gonna be basically valued at a, at a lower price. You know, what we have here now, right where we are now, is that you're coming into window dressing. You know, they just took care of the couple banks. They got that set aside for right now. The more that, you know, news folks start digging into the, or analysts start digging into these other banks, it'll take two or three more weeks before another blow up comes in here, okay? Um, or if it's not a blow up, that the investors will actually understand that, oh my God, what are we talking about here? Now, how much more are we saying, okay, this dollar is not really worth the dollar? Always remember, folks, the bank can claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God, there's always another trade. Health, happiness, and prosperity. Have a great night, folks. Have a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Kicks us off, 9 a.m. Great show, folks. Who <laughs> got him, folks? <laughs>